we're going to learn how to divide polynomials. So before we begin, let's review some division properties. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take a look at these three different expressions. I want us to simplify them. So this first expression here is 6x over 2x. So if we were to simplify, 6 over 2 simplifies to 3, and then x over x simplifies to 1. So that means we have 3 as our simplified answer. This next expression, we have x to the 6 over x to the 2nd. So remember, when you're dividing and the bases are the same, you subtract the exponent. So 6 minus 2 is 4, so we have x to the 4th. And the, it's going to be in the numerator since the exponent in the numerator is larger than the exponent in the denominator. Now for our third expression, we have 5x to the 5th over 10x to the 10th. So 5 over 10 reduces to 1 over 2. And then we have x to the 5th over x to the 10th. So this time, when we subtract 10 minus 5, we get 5, but the 5 is going to go on the bottom since the exponent is larger on the bottom. So that means we have 1 half, and then we have x to the fifth in the denominator. Some more simplifying. So for these, we have to distribute. So we have to distribute this 1 third to the 6x and to the 12. So distributing this one-third, or this multiplying by one-third to each term, it's the same as dividing 6x plus 12 by 3. So remember, dividing is just multiplying by the reciprocal. So 6x times 1 over 3 becomes 2x, and then 12 times 1 over 3 is the same as 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So we get 2x plus 4 once we simplify. Now we're going to do 1 over x times 4x squared plus 7x. Remember that multiplying by 1 over x is the same as dividing by x. So 4x squared times 1 over x, this x will cancel one of these x's, leaving you just 4x. And then 7x times 1 over x, the x's cancel, leaving you just 7. So to divide a polynomial by a monomial, so remember monomial means one term only, you divide each term of the polynomial by the monomial. So here's an example. We have a polynomial, a plus b plus c, divided by a monomial, which is d. So to divide this, we're going to divide each term of the polynomial by the monomial. So we get a over d plus b over d, Let's see over D. Let's do an example. Let's divide 12x squared plus 20x by 4x. So since we're multiplying a polynomial by a monomial, we'll divide each term by 4x. So 12x squared divided by 4x and 20x divided by 4x. So once we simplify, 4 goes into 12 three times and then x squared to x squared over x is just x, plus 4 goes into 25 times, and these x's can cancel completely, leaving the answer 3x plus 5. Example, 8x cubed plus 16x squared minus 4x over negative 4x. So we're dividing a polynomial by a monomial. So we'll take each term of the polynomial and put it over the monomial. So now we simplify. 8 over negative 4 is negative 2, and then x cubed over x becomes x squared. So then we have negative 2x squared. Then we have 16 over negative 4 becomes negative 4, and then x squared over x becomes just x. Then we have negative 4 over negative 4, which is positive 1 and then x over x is 1, so we get plus 1. All right, so now that we know how to divide a polynomial by a monomial, we're going to divide a polynomial by a polynomial. To do this, we need to revisit how we do long division. So we're going to do the same exact steps 
that we do long division, we're going to use the same format. So here is x squared plus 6x minus 9 divided by x plus 2. So when you're doing long division, you think, what can I multiply this number by to get this number? So what can I multiply x by to get x squared? Well, I have to multiply by x. So x plus x is x squared. Then I also have to do x times 2, which is 2x. So you multiply, but then you have to subtract. So we're going to subtract this. So we're going to subtract the x squared, and we're going to subtract the 2x. So x squared minus x squared cancels, which is what we want ha to happen. And then 6x minus 2x leaves us 4x. So now we start all over again. What can I multiply x by to get 4x? Well, I can multiply it by a positive 4, which becomes plus 4. Um, oh, also, guys, remember when you bring down the number, go ahead and bring down that number. So we're going to do plus 4. So 4 times x becomes 4x. And then 4 times 2 becomes 8. So we're going to subtract that. So 4x minus 4x cancels, which is what we want to happen. And then negative 9 minus 8 is negative 17, right? And then there's nothing left to bring down. So our remainder is negative 17. So our answer is x plus 4 with the remainder of negative 17. Now, when writing our final answer, which is called the quotient, we're going to take that remainder and we're going to put it over the divisor. So remember, our remainder was negative 17, so we're going to put negative 17 over that x plus 2. All right, so here are the steps to divide polynomials. You arrange the terms and both the dividend and the divisor in descending degree. So you start with the highest degree and then you go down. And then you complete the divide, multiply, and subtract procedure, which is the long division procedure. And then step three is you repeat step two until the degree of the new dividend is less than the degree of the divisor. And, that, and you'll have your remainder. So you place any remainder over the divisor and add that rational expression to your answer or to the quotient. And then step four is you can actually check your answers by multiplying your answer by the divisor and making sure that you get the same number. So let's do this example where we have x minus 2, and we want to divide that into x cubed minus 8, right? So we're doing x cubed minus 8. So notice that there is no x squared term. So we left some space here. There's also no x term, so we left some space here. It's very important to leave space for the things that we can't use yet, okay? So now we start our process. What can I multiply by x to get x cubed? Well, we have to multiply by x squared, okay? Oh, they're showing the, the 0 x squared and the 0 x. So x squared. So x squared times x becomes x cubed, and then x squared times negative 2 is negative 2 x squared. Then we'll subtract. So x cubed minus x cubed becomes 0, and then 0 x squared, because we didn't have an x squared, minus negative 2 x squared becomes plus 2 x squared. So now we start our process over again. This is repeating that step two, right? So what can I multiply x by to get 2x squared? Well, I have to multiply by a positive 2x, so that will be plus 2x. Also, notice that when I bring something down, all I'm bringing down is that 0x. So 2x times x becomes 2x squared. And then 2x times negative 2 becomes negative 4x. Now I subtract. So 2x squared minus 2x cancels, which is what that's supposed to happen. And then 0x minus negative 4x becomes positive 4x. And then I bring down the negative 8. 
All right, so then I think, what can I multiply x by to get 4x? Well, I have to multiply by 4. So 4 times x is 4x. And then 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Then I subtract. 4x minus 4x is 0. And then negative 8 minus negative 8 is also 0. So I get a remainder of 0, which is great because that means there's no remainder. So my answer is x squared plus 2x plus 4. Let's do another one. Let's do 3a cubed minus 5a squared plus a plus 2. So notice that this is in descending order, and all of our variables are represented, so I don't have to put any zeros in. So we start. What can I multiply 3a by to get 3a cubed? Well, I have to multiply by a squared. So a squared times 3a is 3a cubed, and then a squared times 1 is a squared. Now I subtract. So 3a cubed minus 3a cubed is 0, which is good. I want that to cancel out. And then negative 5a squared minus a squared becomes negative 6a squared. And then I bring down the a. So I have negative 6a squared plus a. So I think, what can I multiply 3a by? to get negative 6a. Well, I have to multiply by negative 2a. So that's minus 2a. So negative 2a times 3a is negative 6a squared. And then negative 2a times 1 is negative 2a. So that's what I have here. Then I subtract. So negative 6a squared minus negative 6a squared becomes 0. And then a minus negative 2a becomes 3a. And then I bring down the 2. So then I think, what can I multiply 3a by to get 3a? Well, 1, a positive 1, so it's going to be plus 1. So 1 times 3a is 3a. And then 1 times 1 is 1. Then I subtract. 3a minus 3a is 0, and then 2 minus 1 is 1, which means I have a remainder of 1. All right, go ahead and try some problems on your own. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Remember when you have a remainder that you put it over, here's my remainder of 1, I put it over what I was dividing by, so that 3a plus 1.